So, Friday, I finished work and I went down into the secure parking at work to find that someone had stolen my Carbo Wolf Warrior. I was fuming. This is the second time. First one was on me. First one was on me. Um, I didn't have a great lock on it. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, then you'll know that uh, that happened on <laughs> Boxing Day a few years ago and nothing really came of getting that back and whatever. So I'm not really holding out hope for the return of the scooter that I lost. And that's why I'm making this video. So I went on the internet and I tried to find um, a scooter that I could get quickly. Uh, that wasn't going to be a piece of crap because I still need to use it to get to work every day. Um, there's a lot of hills and stuff. It's about 10 kilometers each way. So it needs to have a halfway decent battery. I mean, most scooters will do that, but what you might not factor in is that if you go in like that for 10 minutes, that takes a big chunk off your battery. Um, especially like me, I'm a bigger dude. Uh, I'm like 96 kgs at the moment, I think, about 95, 96. More weight on those motors will definitely suck up more power. What I landed on was the Apollo Phantom. Um, it's like 52 volt battery um, with two 1200 watt motors. So roughly the kind of power that I had in my Carbo, but in a lighter frame, in a more compact um, package. Not really an off-roady kind of thing, but to be fair, I didn't do much off-roading on the Wolf anyway. It was just the, the ground clearance and that kind of stuff was good if I was had to go off-road. Went to the scooter shop. This is uh, iScoot um, in... It's funny, I was having this conversation today. I don't know where anything is. I've lived here like almost 16 years, I think we're up to. 16? Anyway, beside the point. They didn't have in stock the scooter that I was looking for. Now, the reason I was looking at that one because hydraulic brakes, which I kind of, I really do prefer, has a thumb throttle. So where you push it down instead of pulling a trigger, which is gonna take a little bit of getting used to because I haven't had a thumb throttle scooter since the Mercane wide wheel, which is fine. I'm sure that'll be okay. And I'm sure there's aftermarket stuff to be able to change to a throttle, uh, a trigger throttle. Uh, I just like, I like having my finger on the trigger, let's be honest. This scooter has indicators, which I haven't had before, which is nice. Because doing this and this, uh, sorry, this is fine. But when you've got a backpack on, you're not seeing much of that backhand movement. And for some reason, I'm incapable of taking my left hand off the handlebars. I can't do it. It's a, it's a mental thing. It's a mental block. I just, for some reason, I can't let go of that. This hand, I could, I could probably get from here to work and never have my right hand on the handlebar. And it would be slow going because that's the same side the throttle's on, but never mind. So they didn't have that one, but they did have slightly more expensive. So the 52 volt was two grand, 1999. But they did have the 60 volt version, which was two, three, four, five, something like that. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna unbox it, have a look at it, and get a feel for what is my new commuter. I'm running over network cables right now, so not really advised. Advisable. Learn how to speak. Ooh. Dolly, courtesy of the lovely Simone. Shout out to that girl who took me to go and get my scooter. Lifesaver. Oh, we've got a little box inside a box situation here. So we'll flip this joint over. I've seen so many unboxing videos and, and of different things, scooters and bikes and 
motorcycles. That this, cutting it on the bottom and lifting it up seems to be the easier, easiest way to go about it. So, Apollo Phantom, cool box. It's actually a really cool box. Okay, so more straps. I think the appeal of a box in a box is that it's just an extra layer of protection. When, you know, shipping. Just realized I just run my knife through there and I don't know what packing is like on the inside of the box. So here's hoping I didn't just absolutely scuff that up. First, we've got a manual, which normally I don't read these, but I might, I will have to look at that for the P settings. If you're not into electric scooters or e-bikes, you might not know, but the P settings are the settings for your power output. Um, if you have some kind of braking assistance, like regenerative braking, regenerative, regenerative, braking gosh I'm assuming this is a power brick which it is pretty standard three pin connection I'm assuming this is like two amps 2.5 amp charge which is the same as the Carbo Wolf Warrior rest in peace which means that even though they didn't give me a second charger for fast charging I could fast charge because got so many of these dang things around we've got the other end to that cable we've got these joints are the little uh, cat protectors Let's see I'll show you that properly there you go I don't know how well that's gonna focus but that's the little you put them on your wheel nuts to protect I don't know why I smelled that and then we've got the scooter itself now prepare to hear oh sorry one more thing every scooter must have a set of allen keys that you just will never use because you have your own better allen keys now i've recently hurt my back and i see this going poorly <laughs> but <laughs> yeah this is gonna go poorly i'll Flip him on his side and open the bottom. <sighs> Pause. And we can do it like we did the other one. <sighs> so, yeah. 60 volt, 21 amp hour battery. It's not going to be a slouch. But at the same time, um, oh, well, that's easy. <laughs> so that folds out open like that. And then we stand this guy up. So everything on here is pretty much assembled except for, sorry about all the squeaky noises, uh, except for the handlebars, which we'll do in a second. We're gonna get that off there. I'm gonna put this, funny, it's funny how little, Actually, you might not be able to see it, but I'll show it to you later. The kickstand on this thing is a little baby kickstand. And uh, while this isn't as huge, oh goodness, or as beefy as my last scooter, it still makes me feel like I'd want something a slightly more substantial holding up my $2,300. So, let's move the camera and let's get it, or well, maybe I'll just move closer to the camera and we'll have a look at a couple of things. Oh, this has nut brakes. 
I'm excited for that. Oh my gosh, I'm such a dog. <laughs> okay, so in order to m help uh, make the installation of the handlebars a bit easier, we're gonna put the stem in place. So what we do here, is so right here, we've got a little grenade pin. We're gonna pull that guy out this is connected by a bungee, so if it was to not be plugged in for any reason, you're not going to lose it. Although having that dangle around probably be pretty annoying pretty quickly. You lift up the stem, and then on the back here, there's a little silver lever. Uh, let's see if you can get that. I think you can see that little silver lever there. So we pull that up, and as that pulls this way, pushes this way, this locking tooth or whatever it is, goes in. So opposing force there. And that is, I don't want to say surprisingly, because I really want it to be solid, but that is very, very solid. Once that's in, put your little grenade pin back in, which is a, just another safety. And then here, around here, which you probably can't see because it's all black anyway, is a little collar with a nub right here. And that folds over the silver part when you turn it, which, again, another, it's more redundance, more redundancy, redundance, good grief. Man, this thing is solid. I really, really like this scooter. All right, so here we're looking at the display. One thing that I'm noticing, because this is the first time I've seen a Phantom. Damn, those handlebars are nice too. Yeah, I think I'm going to be fine with that. Sorry, I just lost my knife. Here it is. A, a misgiving that I had was that these were small scooters. Um, but here's the thing. When you're a small boy, <laughs> regular size stuff seems big. Immediately pulling that off, this looks scuffed as hell. But it does have a screen protector on there, so we can pull that off and we'll be fine. Let's rip that diffusion off and get us a bit. Ooh, look at that arm. Whoa. Haven't been to the gym forever. That's just residual muscles. So what we've got here is obviously the brain. A little bit further down, let's just do this manually. We've got here a headlight, LED headlight, which is a thousand lumens. It has this odd cone shape to it, and we'll have a look at it, but I'm not super uh, sure how much throw that's gonna have, or what that beam is gonna look like. Now, this part here, which you see is already loose, uh, that holds your handlebars in. So, I find my Allen keys. This that holds the. Ouch! They're really tight. Um, that holds the light onto the bracket, and then the screws for the bracket are actually underneath that. So, pain in the butt, but to be fair, you should only ever have to do this once because even uh, mounting different. Uh, throttles or whatever, brake levers, I'm not really sure I've ever heard of anybody changing out their entire brake system. Um, see a lot of people on Reddit asking about it, but I've never heard of anybody actually doing it. You know, some people want to put hydraulics on a, on a scooter that's originally mechanical brakes. And yeah, on that note, I, the reason I like the uh, hydraulic brakes, it's, it's one of those things where you have to kind of feel it and then you'll understand the responsiveness of a hydraulic brake over a mechanical brake, um, mechanical brakes feel sloppy to me and I don't know maybe I have to try 
Oh, mea culpa. Maybe I have to try mechanical brakes again just to see how they feel, but not a big fan. So, you'll see some knurling in here. You should just be able to see it there. Gosh dang it, I'm sweating under these lights, boys. And girls, probably not girls, but definitely boys. Um, it's been a long time since I did a video under lights <sighs> I've already lost a bolt boys so this, is, this is terrible this is very hard to do by yourself <laughs> uh, a drill probably would have helped but I don't have a drill so we do what we can adapt and overcome right there it is. Oh my gosh. <sighs> All right. That was fun. And I think right there seems pretty good. Oh, someone's going to be annoyed. She's got a headache at the moment. And even though she has a headache, she did take me out to pick this guy up, so very appreciative but she ain't gonna be too happy if I keep dropping things on the ground <laughs> oh my gosh I honestly I'm not doing that on purpose higher than it was before it is how is that now higher than it Is it because this wire's in the way? Oh, this wire might be in the way. Um. <gasps> it's upside down! Oh no! This is round because this sits in here and then that sits lower. Oh, buddy. Well, in other news, this week is Easter. Ugh. You interested to know what people are doing for Easter? Do you celebrate? Do you have a lunch with family? And if you don't celebrate? I mean if you're not a if you're not a Christian I mean to say what do you do for your long holiday? Yeah. Go shooting, go hiking, maybe just catch up with family and friends for, you know, a little gathering. All right. Now, while this seems wrong, originally, oops, that makes a heck of a lot more sense. <laughs> so let's put that in. Ah. You know me and myself. I have been struggling uh, with my walk with Jesus. Um, and not in the sense that I lost faith but I have absolutely uh, lost diligence and that's all on me um, a part of it I guess comes down to uh, mental health and prioritizing things but uh, regardless um, there's a very small 
difference between reasons and excuses. Um, and I'm happy to talk about excuses, uh, happy to talk about reasons, uh, but just, you know, I'm not trying to excuse myself. So, after a, uh, pretty intense discussion, um, I did have to, uh, evaluate, you know, where I was and what, uh, what action I was taking for myself in regard to my faith and how I was being an example to others and how I was just really taking um, a an active role in my own um, spiritual life and I'm um, very thankful for having had that conversation and being able to um, straighten some things out in my head now this is really trying my dang patience Ooh, you won't be able to tell I don't think let's see how slow I can move this can you see that Donk. it feels as though it does it has a detent in the stem I don't, I don't think it's probably not obvious but as you turn it it has slight dent that it just right there it sits into um, well, wow, that's crazy. Right there, we've got our hydraulic brakes, uh, two piston brakes. Here we've got the spring suspension. There's four springs uh, on each side. And uh, they are adjustable. Uh, the indicator lights, and then I think we've got deck lights at the front, which could have been indicator lights. I'm not entirely sure why they didn't do that. Uh, we've got a rear fender, which covers a pretty good portion of that back wheel. So for rain, well, not really rain, but splash, that should take care of most of it. There is a hole, there is a hole here, and that is for the deck clamp. Uh, deck clamp, that's for the... Uh, stem clamp and this hole here which is just a functional carrying handle which also houses the brake light let's turn this on for the first time oh that starts right up there's the indicator there indicators are on and off which does mean you can turn them both on at the same time, which actually would be pretty useful uh, in a uh, like emergency. So without any weight on it, it goes about 16 or so, but we're gonna change that. And what we wanna do is hold the up and down together, which gives us T settings. And then you can scroll through those using these commands. So the middle one changes through. So number one is brightness. Number two is kilometers or miles per hour. Three is your battery voltage. Four is your shut off time. So basically the five there indicates five minutes. P5 is not a thing apparently, P4 
56 is your wheel diameter, which should read 10 because they are 10 inch tires. I think it's 10 by three. Uh, the number of magnets on the motor, why would you change that? You're not adding or subtracting. Power level in speed units. So now this is power level 19. We need to be somewhere in the order of 100. Uh, let's see. Start method, zero start or zero for kickstart, one for, no, one for kickstart, zero for zero start, which makes sense. P10, unused. P11 is electronic braking. To be honest, I can't do electronic braking. I'm taking that all the way off because I just find it really jarring that when I break a second later, there's another break happening. It's awful. I hate it. I never use it. P12 is acceleration, uh, which is low one, high five. And I'm going to keep that in three because I haven't ridden the scooter before. P13 is unused. P16 is the lifetime odometer. Oh, P13 to 15, I beg your pardon. Lifetime odometer, only up to 100 kilometers, which is ridiculous. I'm going to do that in a couple of months. Cruise control, zero is off. One is on. And then the rest of these say that they are unused. So if you leave that long enough, that will go back, I assume, to normal? Or do I have to hold these down again? No, I'll hold it down again. <laughs> so, now it's set up exactly the way that I want and exactly the way that I ride, but annoyingly, oh, it's rainy and crappy outside. So I've got nowhere to test. <laughs> but anyway, that was the unnecessarily long video of how my scooter got stolen, how I bought a new scooter how I'm trying to repair my relationship with my savior and how it's raining today. <laughs> I hope that was enjoyable to somebody. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. Yeah. Have a look at other videos if you like. It's, it's a bunch of nonsense. It really is just a bunch of nonsense. But anyway, God bless. Look after each other and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.